Hello and welcome. So this video will go through step by step creating a pool of Windows Virtual Desktops, Windows 10 and services in Azure using the new ARM based model aka Spring 2020 update. So Windows Virtual Desktop is a desktop as a service powered by Azure where we can deliver a multi-session Windows 10 experience together with application delivery of your choice including essential Office 365 apps to your users. This can now all be done quickly via the Azure portal. We will create a pool of Windows 10 desktops and join to the domain, and then we will publish remote applications and desktops for connectivity over the internet. So this video is an extension of a previous AD Connect video um, in my channel. Links are below in the description if you need to watch. Um, so what we did uh, in that video is we set up AD Connect to sync um, our on-premise AD uh, to Azure AD, which is a prerequisite that's required um, for this uh, WVD setup. So you can see in the diagram, um, that was the part covered on the left of the diagram uh, within the AD Connect piece. Um, in this diagram on the right, and um, we will add uh, WVD uh, to this in red. Okay, So the web access, the broker, the gateway, already installed and managed by Azure. So we just need to add the Windows 10 host pool, VMs and applications we want to use, um, which is totally managed uh, by us, the customer. So this gives the ability for users to connect securely um, over the RD web page, which is already provisioned and fully managed by Azure. So we don't need to worry about the, the front end access here. They can also um, connect from anywhere over the internet via the um, remote desktop client, which we'll also take a look at in this video. They can use HTML5, Android, iOS, uh, Windows devices as well. So before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. Videos uploaded weekly on Azure technical guides and certification. I'll give you a moment to do this now and then we can get started. Thank you. So in this video, we will create a host pool, which will contain our Windows 10 desktops, which will be joined to the domain. We will create application group assignments. So we will sync AD groups for user access. We'll take a look at session hosts. Uh, we will log into the, the Windows virtual desktops using the web. Um, we'll create uh, remote applications as well, um, publish some remote apps. So we'll log into these uh, remote apps using the web too. And we'll look at session uh, messages, log off and uh, disconnects. And we'll also look at the, uh, the RDP client as well. So let's first create our Windows Virtual Desktop host pool, which will contain our Windows 10 desktops. So if we search for uh, Windows Virtual Desktop or WVD in the search bar, and then we go to host pools, and then if we click add, and then if we choose our resource group, in this case is RG1, uh, and then we choose our pool name. So we choose in this case East US for our metadata information. Now WVD stores uh, global metadata information like um, tenant names, host pool names, um, application group names and uh, user principal names in a, in a data center. So whenever a customer creates a service object, they must enter a location um, for that service object. So the location they enter determines where the metadata for the object will be stored. And then for the host pool type, we have two options, personal or pooled. So we're going to select the type as pooled in this scenario rather than personal. So this will allow multiple users to share multiple hosts that you create. We will also set the maximum session limit to two per host specified against the host pool. For the load balancing algorithm, we have two options, breadth first or depth first. So for breadth first, if a user connects to a WVD host pool um, with this configured, during the login process, a query is run against the available session host within the host pool. Uh, the load balancing uh, method selects the session host with the least number of sessions. So the depth first load balancing method uh, maximizes session uh, utilization of a host um, before loading sessions onto the next available session host. 
Okay, so it suggested that the algorithm is for organizations who want to operate uh, an active passive uh, WDVD deployment um, or to reduce costs. So the depth first method queries the available session host uh, to establish where to place the new sessions. And if a session host uh, has exceeded the maximum session limits specified against the host pool, new sessions will be loaded onto the next available session host. So now we want to add our virtual machines or our Windows 10 desktops uh, to be built. So if we choose yes at this point, if we choose our resource group, if we choose our virtual machine location, which in this case is UK South, we're going to change the virtual machine size um, for this demo. So if we click change size and then choose our um, VM uh, size, which is two CPU and four gig of memory for this demo, uh, the number of VMs we're going to build out is two. Uh, so if we choose a name prefix, so this uh, will build a VM um, with the name uh, workstation and then it will add a, a prefix number on the end of that. So for the image type, we will choose a, an image from the Azure gallery. We will select an image um, of Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session that has uh, Microsoft 365 um, Office apps built into that. Uh, for our stor storage, we will choose premium SSD. We will choose an existing VNet, in this case VNet1. Um, we will choose our subnet. We don't want a public IP assigned because we can go through the RD web uh, interface, which is automatically built in. We will now uh, enter our domain to join, which in this case is cloudinspired.local. Uh, uh, and then we will specify the organizational unit uh, where we want the uh, workstations to be joined um, in Active Directory. So in this case, it's in an OU called workstations within our directory. We will also specify uh, our administrator account uh, to join the Windows 10 desktops to the domain. Let's also create a new workspace uh, name here if one doesn't exist already. So if we click OK and then click Next, and then if we review um, and create our host pool. So we can see while our host pool is being created, we've got our Windows 10 desktops with a workstation and prefix number. And we can also see within Active Directory, our two uh, VM desktops have been joined to the domain in the workstations OU we specified earlier. So within Azure AD, we have a, a group um, synced from on-premise Windows Virtual Desktop group, which contains our users to gain access um, to our host pools. So now if we go back to Windows Virtual Desktop, we can see our host pool is now being created. If we go to Application Groups, we can see this has also been created um, for a desktop application group. So this means our Windows 10 desktops are fully accessible um, over the RD web interface um, so users can log in and access those desktops directly. So if we now go to assignments, we can now add the Windows virtual desktop group which contains our users to give them access to the desktops. So if we add the group here, So here we will have a look at our Windows 10 desktops, our session hosts that we created earlier on. So if we go to our host pools, session hosts, we can see we've got two created and they're running. We can add more here if we want, um, if we run out of uh, session host. I'm not going to add any more at this point, but this is exactly the place where you would do it within the portal. And here we can see we've got application groups added um, with one user ready to go to connect to our desktops, which we will do in the next step. OK, so now we are ready to log on to our pool of Windows 10 desktops over the Internet that we create. The pool will be load balance based upon breadth first load balance in selecting the session host with the least number of sessions. So we access the RD web URL, which is a global address used by everyone over the Internet, which is automatically available and managed by Azure. So the link is below in the description if you need it. 
we can then see our chosen desktop that we click on and have the option of local mapping of clipboard and printers to our device. Then we simply log on to our Windows 10 device. We enter our Azure AD username and account credentials, which uh, has been synced um, from on-premise AD using AD Connect. As stated before, this is covered in another video. Again, links below if you need a step-by-step -step guide how to set up AD Connect. We can see that we've successfully logged into our Windows 10 desktop and we have our Office 365 applications installed ready as part of the build. OK, so let's publish remote applications now instead of desktops. So when we go into the application groups, we can see our desktop application group. Um, so let's create a, a remote app application group. So if we click on add, choose a host pool we created earlier. As you can see, uh, desktop group is grayed out as we already have one uh, and, and, and remote app is available. So if we choose an application group name, and then we choose a resource group that the application needs to be in. Okay, now here's where we assign our group uh, of users to give access to this application. So if we use our existing group that we created earlier, and that has our users within there. Now the next stage is we can actually choose our applications. Now we can choose either a path, um, of custom applications, or we can just choose pre-built applications within Windows 10. So let's go for Paint. And then if we add that in, and then if we choose a second application, let's go for WordPad, publish that. OK, if we add that one in too. So within our workspace, let's choose an existing workspace we created earlier. And if we just click next and review and then create the application group. So that, now let's try testing our applications by logging in again to the RD web URL. And then we can see now that we've got our applications listed here within a browser. So we can launch Paint. We enter our credentials again. And then Paint launches within a window. And then again, we can close this down and we can launch WordPad. And then we can log in again and then launch WordPad as an application. So we've now successfully um, published our remote apps um, based upon our applications chosen in the previous steps. So then now we can use a portal to uh, manage uh, users that are currently logged in. So if we look on users, we can see our user logged in there. We can go to sessions and we can see the user there and we can log that session off, we can disconnect that session or we can send the, the user a message. Um, in this instance, please log off. If we click OK and then we can see within that session in a moment that message should appear here. So that's from a user's perspective. So we've previously used the RD web interface to access our applications and desktops. We can install a client locally called the RD web client, um, download from the Microsoft site, links are below. So if we install this now, the video sp speeded up a little bit to install the app. Um, you log in with your Azure um, credentials and then you just have access um, from your device, um, your applications, either published or desktop to access. As you can see, we can access um, our WordPad application, enter your credentials, can log in straight away, and we can access our Paint application. And we can also access um, our full desktop as well, which is part of the group. OK, 
Okay, that's it. So please subscribe to the channel. Videos uploaded weekly on Azure technical guides and certification. Um, thank you very much for watching the video and uh, catch you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.